Hey everybody, it's uh, Gangish here, back with some more interviews. The following is a set of interviews from a man named Terrence Roberts, uh, who's been famous for a multitude of reasons. Uh, he was just ran for mayor of Denver, for one thing. Uh, but uh, he's a very interesting character, and his story is outlined in the uh, Holly documentary, a documentary that can be found on YouTube, or, or not YouTube, Hulu, Amazon, uh, a couple other places, I think Stars. I'm happy that the man took the time to come talk to me and and actually give me an interview. But um, we talked about we talk about some sensitive topics, um, and these videos are not going to be monetized. There's no way they're going to be monetized because of some of the things that are talked about in the videos. If you can help a brother out with even a like or a share, it goes a long way. Uh, I get it, times are rough, but just a like, a like, share, subscribe, that'd be fantastic. I love you guys, and, and you guys are the reason that I've gotten this far, so I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers, and I, I hope that you, uh, I hope you enjoy this video. So, in the film, it also made it look like, because you keep talking about money, right? Uh, it, it, it makes it seem like they, they approached you that they, they wanted you to they wanted you to be an informant. Yeah, well, so I got a contract to work with Grid, which that money is coming from um, the Department of Safety. It's federal money. The, the Department of Safety is who funds the FBI, um, different police stations. And we had a memorandum where they wanted us to participate in these meetings. Okay, fine. I get to the first meeting because I, I, you know, I'm running Particle Sun. I didn't have to go to all the meetings. I get to the meeting. It's every law enforcement officer you can imagine: adult parole, adult probation, juvenile parole, juvenile probation, FBI, ATF, Denver Police, Aurora Police. Name name an agency in Colorado. They were sitting at the table. Um, bunch of rude, angry, racist looking white men looking at us like we was like they little like they little snitch pets or something, just staring at us. And so we would not participate in talking about what our clients were wearing, what our clients told us. Um you know that's that we had a client privilege, which they didn't they didn't even respect it. They're just like, no, we're working with them. We're we're caseworkers now. We don't have to tell you what they told us. Yeah. Our job is to get these young brothers and sisters jobs and give them a safe place to come play chess, hide, hang out, go hiking or rafting with us. I'm not sitting here talking about somebody need to stop wearing red or blue. What, the, what do I care about that? I don't give a damn. No, Crips wear red. Blood's always worn blue. So I'm less worried about talking to the police about what my client is and get them sent to jail versus me talking to my client and saying, man, you can do it, bro. We got a job for you. Can you work at Starbucks? You don't want to work there. You don't want to be a barista. You know, that shit is not easy either. Snooty white people who want it just perfect. They want that caramel latte with, with a little froth, just perfect. Uh, that's what happened. I, that's how I fell apart. So I went to the first meeting they weren't going on the street. We kind of introduced ourselves. So I told them, hey, these are my outreach workers. They're going to be coming to this meeting. We try to get Gerald on as an outreach worker, but Lisa Carter Rome, who just ran for mayor against me, stole my platform and another woman named Regina Herter. Um, they all sit on this crime prevention and control commission. They didn't want drill. So I got I got my two partners, Brian Butler and Quest. They never even been in the game, which is totally against what we were doing. But I hired these brothers because they were safe. Um, and they were going to the meetings and they were coming to me like, man, T, they're mad at us because they want us to talk about talk about our clients and give them information about what they're wearing and their attitude. And I said, no, nah, man, absolutely not. Just shut up and just sit in there. And so we got to the point to where they were getting called out, getting dissed in the meetings. So I came for me. I got to a big old argument with all the police, all, every agency was in there. Tell them we're not doing none of that. And um, they wanted to defund me. They started defunding me. And the, the police who were working with those bloods in the holly were pretty much like, y'all go ahead and get out of it. Y'all handle that. Now, did they tell them to stab me and shoot me? I don't have evidence of that. But when a group of bloods tell you we'll handle Terrence, he's just a little homie. Like, oh, what do bloods do? Bloods don't sue you. Bloods don't, <laughs> bloods don't come and hit you with a water balloon. Bloods punch you, kick you, shoot you, stab. 
So when they unleashed the bloods on me, with law enforcement knowing that they were going to get me, it literally broke down for me telling my staff, we're not participating in Water Street portions of meetings, um, which they said I was breaking protocol and, and, and not abiding by the grant. But um, we're not leaving either. We're not, you know, we, they, they still have to fund me. They had a contract just to pay for those two people. But I started losing other funding. But then in the end, I didn't even have that anymore because I didn't want to do the grant anymore. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how corrupt all these cops and these poor old probation officers are. If we would have been in that room giving information on clients, somebody's parole or probation officer would have went to that blood or crypt and said, man, your boy Terrence, what's up with him? I don't know what's up with him. Man, he's in there talking about people's wearing this and that. After they defunded me for not doing it, berated my staff for not doing it, but if we would have did it, they would have talked the bloods and crypts we were doing it. I could be dead right now. Look at how they treated me and I've never told on anybody. I guarantee you there's not a blood or a crypt alive that could produce a piece of paperwork with my name on it. But let them tell it, I'm such a big snitch. Not Carl McQuaid who admitted working for the police, committing felony on top of felony, smashing through the holly. Not Hassan, who literally talked to Detective Dennison on the documentary, lied on me. So what? He didn't testify against me in the trial. He couldn't testify against me because he would have purged himself and he had to. It's literally on the Holly documentary, Hassan talking to Detective Dennison, the homicide detective, actually, in, the, in, in, in Denver Health. No one even brings it up. <laughs> if you're an active blood, you're not supposed to have no law enforcement contact. <laughs> That's the problem with Bloods and Crips being activists. <laughs> you can't play both sides of the fence. You can't be telling the police at the table that your, your little homies, because if you're bad, it was your little homies and not your clients. They're your little homies. You can't be talking to them about what your little homies are doing because they pay you a few thousand a month. But then you write back in the five points hitting up C's or in the holly hitting up B's. The police run gangs in Colorado. I don't care who likes what I'm saying. They may not run you as an individual, crip or blood, but if you got one person from your gang that's working with the police and they and they can still go to Randall's or they can go to the Horizon, the police run your gang. Because people's talking to them. The people's giving them information. I'm not against the police. I think police should be police. Blood should be bloods and crips should be crips. Or stop gangbanging. And that's my advice. People can disagree with me. It's okay to disagree. Just don't try to punch me and kick me in the head and call me a snitch.